welcome back, and thank you so much for Magus, to Magus Herrera for really kicking off a wonderful last half of the afternoon. Magus actually flew up from Mexico City. She's doing a series of concerts down here, down there, and uh, came up particularly uh, uh, to perform here. So, Magus, thank you so much again. Uh, I also want to take this opportunity to thank Theatre Projects for generously sponsoring all the performances this week. So, uh, Theatre Projects, good on you. Thank you. Now, we have a treat coming up next. Um, for those of you who um, maybe haven't been here before, a number of years back, we realized there were so many voices in the room from different regions, it'd be great to hear what's happening in the various regions. So each day we've been, um, uh, we'll be hearing from a different part of the world that actually, in many regards, what's going on there right now very much reflects the theme for this Congress. Um, so, uh, we heard earlier a little bit about the protests in Chile, and of course we've all been watching um, uh, the reports on Hong Kong. So, I'm delighted to uh, welcome one of our fellows, um, uh, Anka Chung, who is going to give us um, a, just a brief insight into what's going on in Hong Kong and the Bay Area. So, Anka, if you can join us. Hello everyone, my name is Anka Chung, and I am an ISPA fellow from Hong Kong. A city of 7.4 million people living in a territory about 430 square miles, or about one third larger than New York City, we are one of the most densely populated cities in the world. But only a quarter of the land is built on, making it one of the greenest cities too. The arts play a significant role in the culture, with the most consumed performing arts forms being Chinese opera, music, and theater. In 2016-17, performing arts drew over 5 million attendances. But I know many of you are thinking, can you please just tell us what's going on with the protests, and where do you stand? This question is something I think all Hong Kongers, as people of many other regions, now face. And navigating the, the nuances of the dispute is not easy, given the divisiveness and passions it spurs within families, friends, and communities. Also, I only have five minutes to do this. <laughs> so, what I can offer is how the protests are impacting art in the city, and vice versa. For many in the sector, protest-related disruptions have rippled across the gamut of organizations, companies, and artists alike. Take the charity I work with, the Hong Kong Youth Arts Foundation where on any given week, we are running different free-of-charge art programs for hundreds of young people. Through the seven months of protests, we've had to rearrange or cancel rehearsals, workshops, and performances over the issues like the ability of our youth and our staff safely getting to and from performances or rehearsals. We've had to build in much longer timelines for when we get sets built or costumes made in mainland China due to stricter custom controls. We've had to relook at the issues that we've chosen to tackle or not to tackle. Even seemingly innocuous things, like the black clothing worn by our backstage staff and often by our youth performers during rehearsal, as well as almost every piece of clothing I own, has become a symbol for the democracy movement. There have been some positive outcomes for the art industry. The protests and disruptions have been like a giant stress test. We've had to think out of the box and on our feet. Contingency planning has taken on new importance. For freelance artists and backstage production staff, cancellations have appended the honor system and made clear the need for clear contractual protection. The tenacity and the heart shown by the arts has been really moving. Faced with unpredictable road and transportation disruptions, companies have had to rethink their work. For us, Live performances have found a new path as film projects, giving our youth even wider experience. Unable to access their venue, one dance company instead drew their audience into their practice studio. Another music organization for disadvantaged youth pressed on with their annual show, offsetting risks with more stringent emergency planning. The continued interest in the arts, in part, reflects the pressing need for expression and for a voice. But equally, there is some degree of needing normalcy 
and a space where we can retreat away from the political conflict. Hong Kong has freedom of expression and freedom of speech. Setting aside any political judgment, an incredible amount of art has come out of the protest movement. The recent district council elections also saw a number of artists and cultural practi practitioners win office, promising to bring creative thinking to their roles. Sponsors to the arts on the whole have been very supportive. While we were forced to change outcomes and deliverables for several projects, sponsors have honored their commitments and adapted. We expect more funding to go to more community rebuilding and healing projects in the future. The Hong Kong Arts Development Council also has a relief plan in place and will soon be announcing details. Looking abroad, Hong Kong Week as part of the China Shanghai International Arts Festival saw 87% capacity. Hong Kong will be present at Classical Nix in Rotterdam and Venice Biennale, amongst other international festivals and forums. It is also growing its presentations and collaborations within the Greater Bay Area of China, which comprise nine major cities and more performing arts venues than we can count, and more every day. So the opportunities are amazing. To close, I think it's important for the international community to understand that struggle has always been a part of the Hong Kong identity, from the British colonial era to the one country, two systems approach under China. Dialogue between diverse and divisive views, more so than ever, has taken on an urgency, and arts and culture is a key outlet for this. Going forward, we at the Hong Kong Youth Arts Foundation will prioritize projects that bring together and gives true voice to youth and to communities. Other organizations will hopefully do the same. If you have any ideas for us or want to talk about Hong Kong, please do approach me as I would love to speak to you over the next few days. Thank you very much.